Hello, you're watching ITU Telecom TV at Cairo in Egypt for ITU Telecom Africa 2008. This time I'm talking with a young entrepreneur from Tanzania who's come up with an innovative solution, uh, an e-banking solution, which is not only perfect for Tanzania, but also could be rolled out across the entirety of Africa. I'm very glad to welcome him here. His name is Nadim Juma, and this company is called e -Fulusi, which means, and Fulusi apparently means money, in Tanzanian. Nadim Juma, thanks very much for coming in. Um, you're a Tanzanian. You were born in Calgary in Canada and you're, you're, you're back in Tanzania now. What made you want to get into the ICT sector in what must be a very difficult area to get into it in? Thank you, Martin. Um, well, as you said, I'm a Tanzanian. I was uh, actually born in Canada and studied there and moved to Tanzania with my family when I was in high school. Went back to the West to study uh, in the UK and while I was there, I realized that there was a need in Africa. A lot of what we saw going on in Africa was coming in from outside, and the interests were not really in the interest of our people. So I wanted to see how we as a youth could go back and change our continent. And when I went back to Tanzania, my home, what I consider home, we realized very, very quickly that the only way that we'd be able to develop is if our people are able to enter the formal economy. Uh, in Tanzania, we have 40 million people, but only 1.3 million banked customers. So the majority of the population is unbanked compared to 10 million mobile subscribers. So we said, well, let's use the technology, the existing infrastructure that's been set out by the operators in terms of networks, agent networks, et cetera, and how can we deploy solutions? Uh, initially, we said, well, let's try and do it all at home. And we brought on a young team, we're all a young team of Tanzanians, and we started developing a switch in Tanzania that allow us to deliver mobile banking solutions to everyone who has a mobile phone. And effectively, that would allow us to initially bank the community, slightly different than payments, because we need to bank them first. And I'm a strong believer that savings is what's going to help bring our people out of poverty. So how did you start? OK, well, the way we started was there was just two of us in a little room. Uh, we had an idea. We started doing research on mobile banking and what the platforms were in the market. And at that time, mobile banking was really the West looking at payments, integrating mobile phones with bank accounts to allow you to buy your tickets, things like that. And we said, well, let's develop the technology. Uh, we got two programmers I brought on who were, had just graduated from the University of Dar es Salaam. And we started to develop a SMS gateway. Uh, what we found very, very quickly with the telcos was that if we were dependent on them, we wouldn't be able to deploy a solution that worked. So we had to be totally independent. We started developing the SMS gateway and a mobile transaction switch. What this effectively allowed us to do was deliver content to all the mobile operators. From there, we said, okay, mobile banking, let's look at the card schemes. We know that credit cards are big in the West. How are those deployed? and how can we translate that onto mobile. Uh, in terms of mobile payments and banking, it's very similar to cards, but it's on the phone, and we took it one step further. We wanted to hold an account. Technology, we found, was very, very simple to develop. We were able to do it in Tanzania, which people often find very surprising. What we found as a challenge, though, is how do we get people to trust this? What do we need to do next? So we started to engage the regulators. Uh, initially the central bank in Tanzania, and then Tanzania Communication Regulatory Authority. Central bank, when we went to them, they were sort of, well, mobiles for payments, no way, never happening in this country, go away. Uh, so we went on, and we went to every level, and what we found was you're starting right at the bottom, talking to middle management in the central bank, all the way up to the governor. It took us 18 months. And effectively, what we did was set out the regulatory framework with the central bank, that this is how you're going to regulate, this is how the account will work, this is how you're going to provide oversight, and no, we don't need a conventional banking license because we don't have $5 million capital to invest. So in that sense, it was free labor. We worked hard. We really didn't need to invest. We then found a strategic partner in Tanzania, which is a local bank called FBME Bank. Uh, with experience in payment systems. And they liked what we were doing and funded us initially to get off the ground and really take our technology through that 18-month process, work with the central bank, and our team started to grow from there. And how were you received by the operators? 
initially when we went into the operators, in Tanzania we have four major operators, which for an African country is quite a bit. Them. And uh, when we went to the operators, that was exactly the response we got. We see you as a value-added service provider. So if you want to use our network, our platform, you're going to pay premium for it. And really, you have to go through the cycle that is this something that we want to do. What, we, what happened during that 18-month period, though, was the Tanzania Communication Regulatory Authority changed their licensing framework. So we were able to apply for an application service license, which allowed us to become licensed to deliver content. And in a way, the operator was obligated to provide us the short codes and the connectivity to deliver our services. Uh, we still find that if we would have had to go to the operator independently and continue, it, we wouldn't have got very far. So we've really latched on to the regulator. And in terms of TCRA, we, we see them as a protector with the operator, that the operator is obligated initially to provide a service, but also good quality service, because the customers are really theirs. How long has the scheme been running now? And most importantly, how has it been received by the users themselves? Well, our 18-month period ended in November last year. Uh, we launched our first service called MobiPower. Uh, MobiPower is a retail model owned by eFulsi Africa. It's totally network independent and bank independent. So any mobile subscriber can hope open a M wallet at one of our agents. Uh, we initially rolled out, and what we found was the biggest problem was trust, understanding, and lack of education and sensitization. Uh, if you don't know what finance is, banking is initially, that's the initial process. The biggest challenge we found with MobiPower was rolling out a network, the agent network. Without the agents, customers really have nowhere to go and it's not branchless banking anymore. So what we decided to do was to partner with a mobile operator, allow them to offer an M-banking solution, and from that, invest into our retail model. Uh, last month, we worked with Zantel, uh, which is part of Itisalat, and we launched a service called Z-Pesa. And we've seen immense uptake. Zantel has a network. They have a customer base. They're currently registering in the last month about 500 customers a day. Uh, the average account size is sitting at about 16,000 shillings, which is close to $14. What you'll find in mobile banking generally in Africa is the money goes in one end, it's transferred and comes out the other end. So we're finding it very, very interesting that people are holding deposits on that account. What services can we give them now? So we're trying to say, well, let's bring on the merchant payments more than the money transfer so they can, it goes beyond just the mobile money transfer. In that sense, it's interesting working with the operator because obviously the operator is not a financial institution. A mobile banking is not their core business. So it's a slow process, but I think they understand the value it's actually going to add to their network in terms of retaining customers and increasing revenues. E-money, e-payments, e-banking is a solution which has seemed to be working in various parts of Africa and has a profound effect on the countries and the people where they are introduced. Your solution seems to be transportable to anywhere else. Do you have plans to carry it out and across into other countries in the African continent? Our goal is to be a pan-African country. Uh, our initial leader, Nyerere, we know was a pan-Africanist, so we're strong believers in Africa. We have two models for Africa. One is rolling out our retail model uh, as a franchise that would allow us to take Mobi Power across the continent. Also partnering with a strong operator uh, we've seen one networks roaming, cross-border roaming at fixed charges, an operator like that that would allow us to offer a pan-African M-banking, and it's very important this M-banking, not M-payments solution. So our, our goal is to export it, and the way that the technology is developed, it's very easy to export it, and the initial costs are not that high. So we're talking to the operators, and we're going to see where we go. Nadim Juma, a real pleasure to meet you. Best of luck with this. And thanks very much. Thank you very much, Martin.